So again, to be sure that we understand what join is. So we are saying for every shipment, get the supply name, part number, shipment quantity. So we take the shipment table and we know that we want the supplier name. So we need the supplier table. But what we are doing is joining the two tables on the supplier number field. Okay, so the supplier number S1 matches the supplier number S1 here. S2 matches S2, S4 matches S4 and so on. And this process is called joining the two tables on the supplier number field. Okay, so that's what we did here. And once you've got the super table, then we can pick out the appropriate columns from this. We want the supplier name, we want the part number, we want the quantity, and that's our result. And to achieve that, we use the SQL, select S name, part number, quantity from suppliers, join shipments. We are indicating the tables that we are joining. We also need to indicate that we'll be joining them on the supplier number field. So we say on suppliers dot supplier number equals shipments dot supplier number. Okay, so this is important. Uh, in fact, uh, interesting queries in SQL, when you're trying to do anything interesting, most of the time there will be joins involved. So you really need to understand the join syntax properly. Okay, so now we are saying for every shipment, get the supplier number, the supplier name, part number, shipment quantity, same query. We are just going to show you another way uh, to achieve this. <clears throat> okay, so we've got this. Now earlier, we were saying suppliers dot supply number equals shipments dot supply number. In other words, the table names were repeating. Suppliers join shipments on suppliers dot supply number, shipments dot supply number, and so on. Okay, this can get just a little weary typing uh, the table names again and again and again. SQL allows a shorter way to do this. Okay, so it's a real pain to keep typing out the long table names. Instead, what we could do is to do the same thing, suppliers S. Uh, now this time, instead of just saying suppliers join shipments, we are saying from suppliers S join shipments SP. Now this S and SP are called aliases for the table names. Okay, these are just names that we make up. You could have called suppliers A, join shipments B, anything you like. Okay, the alias is just a name, a short name that you're giving to the tables so that subsequently you can refer to fields instead of saying suppliers dot supplier number shipments dot supplier number you could just say s dot supplier number sp dot supplier number okay so the aliases once you created them they stand for the name of the table itself okay so you could now say on s dot s number equals sp dot s number instead of suppliers dot s number shipments dot s number okay so this sp and S, uh, S and SP, they stand for the suppliers table and shipments table respectively. Okay, so what we did was we created the aliases for the names of the joint tables and used the aliases for references. In fact, not even subsequent references. Uh, sometimes you will create aliases and in the select class you will say uh, you will use the alias name. Okay. We'll see examples of that later on. I don't want to. Uh, bring that in right now okay so that's about using aliases <clears throat> so we're saying the same query continued for every shipment get the supply name part number shipment quantity we've joined them like this uh, select s name part number quantity from suppliers is joint shipments sp on s dot s number equals sp dot s number now important point to notice is that in this the joined version, the appended supplier information, we are not seeing S3 or S5. We've got only S1, S2 and S4. Why no S3 or S5? That's pretty clear why those don't appear because in the shipments table, S3 and S5 have made no shipments, so they don't occur. Okay, so this is an important property when you join. When you do this kind of a join, then you'll see that the joining occurs only for rows of the two tables in which there is a match on the field on which you're doing the joining. So any supply numbers that don't occur in both of the tables, they don't figure in the output at all. Okay. Now you may say, of course, why should it figure? 
There are some situations when you would want it to figure. Okay. So specifically speaking, this kind of a join is called as an inner join. Okay. That's just a name that they've given. When you're doing a join on a perfect match and you're saying, unless the values match in both the tables that are being joined, don't even include those values. That is called as an inner join. There are some situations when we would say, well, include for me everything that matches and also include for me stuff that doesn't match. We'll see that later on. That's called as an outer join. Okay. So when you just say join, that means we are referring to an inner join. Okay. So that's what we have used. So inner join is the default method when we do not specify anything else in the join. Right. So we just said supplier shipments join suppliers or suppliers join shipments. We just said join. That means inner join. <laughs> okay. Let's do some more uh, using what we've learned before we start going into other types of joins. So here we're saying for every shipment, instead of getting the supplier name, I'm saying get me the part name, project number, shipment quantity. Again, this is your turn. Please pause the video. Try to get your answer. Feel free to flip up uh, back and forth and then continue. Okay, so this is the shipments table. This time we want to join the appropriate parts rows. Okay, so here the part is P1, so we are joining P1. Here again the part is P1, we are joining P1. Here part is P3, we are joining P3. Part is P5, P6, P6, right? So for every row of the shipments table, we find out the part number and append the appropriate part information to create our super table. And then from the super table, we can then get the results. Okay. So this time we are doing a join on the part number of both of these tables. And then we get the results. Right. So the first part is not. That's the part name. The project number is J1. And the quantity is 200. So that's what you're seeing. The second part is also not. Project number is J4. Quantity is 700. That's what you're seeing. Here. Okay. So now it's easy to see how the result is produced by picking out the appropriate columns from the super table. That is the result of the join. Okay. So that's how you do this, uh, this particular query. So the query would be select part name, project number, quantity from parts P. Again, I've used aliases. You don't have to use it, but it's always, I think, a good idea to use it from parts P join shipments SP. Once again, the alias names you give are your choice, but it's a good idea to give an alias name that sort of corresponds to the table parts P shipments SP, you know, so that later on it's easy for you to remember. And then we say on P dot part number equals SP dot P number. That's it. That does uh, this job for us. Let's consider this query. For every shipment, get the part name, project name, supplier name, and the shipment quantity. Now remember, the shipment table actually consists of the part number, project number, supplier number, and shipment quantity. But what we want is not the numbers, but we want all the names. Okay. So clearly, in order to satisfy this query, we need to join all the four tables. We need to join to the shipments table. We need to join the appropriate suppliers, appropriate parts, appropriate projects. That's going to be that after joining all of those, you're going to have your super table. From that, we select supplier name, part name, project name and quantity. That's really what we're trying to do. OK, so our super table is actually going to look like this. Take a look. You've got the shipments and we're first joining parts. OK, so all the part numbers are matching. OK, so initially we have done a match, a join of the shipments table with the parts table on the part number. Then we've taken the shipments table and joined it to project table on the project number. So J1, J1, J4, J4, J1, J1. So you can see that that is the match. OK, so every time what we are trying to do is to the shipments table, join the appropriate other tables. And then similarly, we have joined to the shipments table the supplier table. Okay. So effectively we have done all of this, right? So the parts table has been joined to the shipments table on the part number. 
the project table has been joined to the shipment table on the project number and finally the supplier table has been joined to the shipment table on the supplier okay so now this is the super table from which we can pick out the part name project name supplier name right so it's going to be part name nut project name sorter supplier name smith quantity 200 that's what is going to come from the first row and so on okay so that's really what's going on here so here we are seeing an example of four tables which are joined okay that is shipments to parts shipments to projects shipment to suppliers three different joints involving four different tables and then we select the appropriate rows let's see the syntax for that it's not not very difficult so this is the result that we are looking at so from the first row you see nut sorter smith and 200 okay so from every row we have taken out just the appropriate columns that we want part name project name supplier name and quantity and that gives our result okay so we've taken the appropriate columns and that gives our result for this particular query so we need to of course look at the sql that achieves this select part name project name supplier name quantity that's easy we know all the field names from shipments and we are giving it an alias because we are going to use that in a condition so we are trying to join shipments to parts shipments to projects shipments to suppliers let's see how that is specified so you say from shipments sp join parts p on p dot sp dot p number equals p dot p number okay this we have seen before we are joining shipments to parts but now we also need to join shipments to projects so we just add that on join projects j which is the alias i'm giving to projects on sp dot j number equals j dot j number and then we're going to add one more join join suppliers s on sp dot s number equals s dot s number that's it okay so you don't really have to say join this to this this to this you're just saying okay keep on joining and you indicate which tables you're joining really based on what you're joining on okay so when you're saying ships shipments to parts this condition is what is saying i'm joining the shipments table and the parts table this condition is what is saying i'm joining the shipments table to the project table and again shipments table to the suppliers table okay so the aliases or the table names that you use in the on clause that is what tells you which tables are actually being joined okay so here's a fairly complicated query using several joins but once you break it out into its component pieces, it's not all that complicated anymore. And therefore, you get this result. Let's look at a different kind of a query. List the name and city for every supplier who has made at least one shipment. We already know that there are suppliers, for example, S3 and S5, who have made no shipments. But we are saying for every supplier who has made at least one shipment just tell me the name and the city okay so clearly once again because of the fact that we are looking only for suppliers who have made a shipment and that information is contained only in the project in the shipment table so clearly we need to use the shipment table okay and we need to join that to the supplier table because that's where you're going to get the name and the city okay so clearly we've got the shipment table we join it with the suppliers table and as before we are going to do the join on the supplier number and then we are going to pick out the supplier name and the city okay so if you did that you have a query that looks something like this to begin with select s name city from shipments sp join suppliers s on sp dot s number equals s dot s number this we know from what we've already looked at now, if you execute this query, the result you get is this. Take a close look at the results. Smith, London, Smith, London, Jones, Paris, Jones, Paris. Right? Because that's what is going to come. You've created your super table performing the join. And then from the super table, you're just picking out the supplier name and the city. This is what you're going to end up with. And it's not a very satisfactory state of affairs. 
because supplier Smith may have made many shipments, but there's no point in repeating the information Smith London, Smith London, every time this, this Smith guy has made a shipment. Because we only want the supplier name and the city. There's no point in repeating this information. So clearly, there are lots of unwanted duplicates that this query is generating. Okay, how do we avoid these duplicates? It's actually pretty simple in SQL to avoid this kind of duplication. Okay, all you have to do is to use the distinct clause. So if you just said select S name city, it's just going to pick out S name and city from uh, from the super table that it creates. But if you say select distinct, then after performing the entire query, it's going to remove any rows that are complete duplicates. So for example, these two, first two rows are complete duplicates. And then Jones Parish, Jones Parish, Jones Parish, these are all duplicates. So when you say distinct, it's going to say, well, these two rows are the same, identical. Every field is exactly the same as every other. Uh, every field of every row is the same as every field of every other row of, of these cases, the Smith London cases. So let's just retain one. So it will keep only one Smith London. It's going to keep only one Don's Paris. And then it's going to keep only one Clark London. So it will have only three rows as output. And you achieve that by using the distinct class. Okay, so select distinct supplier name city and everything else is exactly the same as before. From shipments SP join suppliers S on SP.S number equals S.S number. And the result is going to be Smith, London, Jones, Paris, Clark, London. The duplicates have all been eliminated. And this was achieved because we used the distinct clause in our select statement. Okay, so remember that. Whenever there is a potential for a query to generate unnecessary duplicates, it's okay when the duplicates are, uh, you know, when your result set is small. But when you have a large result set running into hundreds of rows, then duplicates can be really irritating. And so, uh, you know, it requires a lot of work for us to visually separate out the duplicates. You can remove that by using the distinct class. Okay, so now you see the duplicates are gone because we used distinct. Okay, so the next query, this is your turn. List the name and city for every part for which we have at least one shipment. Okay, this is very analogous to the prior query. So again, it's your turn. You can refer to the previous query or write yours afresh. Then we'll see what, uh, how to, what SQL will achieve this. Okay, so shipments. Uh, this is our parts table. Okay, so once again, we want to do the joining. And of course, the parts for which you've got shipments are parts P1, P3, P5, P6. So P2 and P4 are not shipped and therefore we just select the appropriate things from here. Of course, we have not shown the corresponding joined portions, but by now you get it since we have done it so many times. So the result is going to be only P1, P2, uh, P1, P3, P5, P6. So nut, screw, cam and cog. That's what you're going to see as the result. Okay. And the SQL is going to look very similar to what we did earlier. So it's going to be select distinct part name city from shipments SP parts P on SP dot P number equals it should be P dot P number, not P dot S number. 